Hello everybody, welcome to another video. In this one I'll talk about achieving, getting a perfect front lever. I'm guessing the second most desirable skill in calisthenics right after the planche, probably. So let's start with what makes the front lever perfect. Basically, neutral scapula position, locked out elbows, no hip flexion, locked out knees and two optional things, pointed toes and anterior pelvic tilt. So to be able to do a front lever you need enough muscle mass and obviously strength. I swear, you can brute force a front lever hold with just being strong enough at weighted pull-ups. But to execute it perfectly with filling all of these boxes that I mentioned earlier, you will need specificity and adaptation to the specificity. With that being said, the first step to achieving a perfect front lever is building muscle mass and strength in the prime mover of the skill. That's how you basically want to look at all these skills. First, building muscle mass and strength in the prime mover. So the exercise that is very good for the job and is the most simple to use and progressively overload is the pull-up. I recommend getting to at least 12 to 15 bodyweight pull-ups. I will probably make a video about exactly how to increase reps in the future. After you have built your very stable base of strength, you can start overloading it with weights. Here you can follow what strength training experts suggest. It's basically 3 to 5 pattern. 3 to 5 reps, 3 to 5 sets, 3 to 5 times per week. So that can be something like 3 sets of 3 with 35 kgs 3 times per week. So that is total of 27 total reps with 35 kgs per week not bad you can do five sets of five with 20 kgs and doing it five times per week that's a total of 125 total reps with 20 kgs per week so do you see the difference 27 reps versus 125 so i doubt that anyone can handle this fatigue and overcompensate with this unless they significantly decrease the load and you know there comes a question if you're training for getting stronger what is the point of decreasing the load so significantly i would stick to something more let's say normal but this depends on how much you can handle and how much you can recover from. Another thing that I don't want you to slip on is picking loads that are too heavy for this. You want to do most of your set with 7 to 8 max RPE. So think of RPE as effort. How much effort are you pushing? So 1 is nothing like walking and 10 is exerting yourself to your limit. So 7 to 8 max RPE basically means that you should have at least 1 or 2 reps in reserve on each set. So basically if you're doing sets of 5, you you are doing sets of five but in reality you can do six reps or seven simply because of how much systemic fatigue you accumulate by training to failure often and frequently so remember heavy but fresh add a little bit more weight every week try to keep rp the same or just slightly higher and that's it have this in mind and work on your real strength until you can pull half your body weight for a few reps so if you weight 70 kgs you want to be able to pull 35 kgs for three or so reps two three four five whatever so at this point when you get to this level some people will already be able to do a front lever basically for free some will need a little bit more work usually on the half lay variations or light bands or both but let's get on to correcting your form because even though you may be able to do a front lever it's probably not as clean as you want it to be because you are undoubtedly strong but now you need some more specific strength to maybe correct a few things if needed so first, neutral scapula. Don't try to retract, especially don't try to protract. Both retraction and protraction, especially protraction, should feel uncomfortable and you might develop pain or injury in some of the small muscles in your rotator cuff that are responsible for retracting the shoulder blades alongside with middle and lower part of your trapezius. So neutral is where your lats is the strongest and can work to its full potential. You can hardly use your lats efficiently if you are retracted. Try this and see for yourself. Second consideration is locked out <gasps> elbows. Goes without saying but I will say one thing though. Doing a slightly bent down front lever in order to make it slightly easier to work on all the other parts of the form that are more crucial is actually a great idea. A lot of people struggle with it, but once they learn it with slightly bent arms, it becomes much easier to lock that elbows later on. So don't be afraid of bending your elbows slightly in the beginning of your journey. Third thing, flexion in the hips. Usually happens due to weakness, so it's easy to solve by getting stronger simply. Fourth thing, locked out knees, usually just compensation due to weakness and shaking. Get stronger or do some dragon flags if you can't get the feeling, but usually it's just compensation due to weakness. Point toes, really just a preference. I would say it adds positively to the image, but I've heard some people say they disagree. Really got nothing to say. Having good looking pointed toes is a lot about just genetics. I try to make my shape of my pointed toes more flat 
with all sorts of exercises, stretches, but never really worked. On the other hand, met people who have it perfectly straight with, you know, no exercises, no, no stretches. So yeah, if you can't really do it to make it look pretty, it's just not for you. Just give up. Fifth and the last thing, anterior pelvic tilt this one is really what makes the difference in my opinion this is what is responsible for that super nice arch that many people think is super aesthetic including me it doesn't come from the scapula it comes from your pelvis so that super nice arch no it's not retraction it's the pelvis in other words the hips so how do you get this basically try it and regress back to the progression that you can do this with the same with posterior pelvic tilt in the planche so a lot of people who can do full planche can't really do it with that nice shape in your pelvis you know posterior pelvic tilt because it's just different and takes time and practice it's a matter of practice basically but the best thing you can do is try a struggle planche or any other easier variation with posterior pelvic tilt and work from there if you really want that nice form so the same applies to the front lever regress back to a progression that you can handle this with and work on that if you want of course it's not necessary you don't see it very often but in my opinion it just looks phenomenal so I have two exercises that help me with strengthening and understanding this. The first one is dragon flags with anterior pelvic tilt. Quite self-explanatory, nothing else to say really. The second exercise is likely a little bit more important and it is arch hold on the ground. So I doubt that you have ever seen this one. But yeah, hear me out. You should not only raise your hips up, but more importantly, feel and push your pelvis up, which is called anterior pelvic tilt. You should feel your lower back muscle, erectus spinae, burning. And be careful because if it's your first time doing it you'll get sore as shit so don't push this one for too much volume that's just my advice but definitely very beneficial exercise for getting a good feeling for this and strengthening it so that's all guys for this video i hope that we will see more nicely formed nicely shaped arched front levers on youtube in the future and thank you for watching